It's the largest and by far, we think, is certainly the most important industry in North Carolina. Of that $70 billion, the, the part that we're going to talk about today is what we call the farm gate value. That's about $10 billion. And you heard on the video uh, Deborah Johnson talk about that $10 billion, the farm gate value. That is the part that, that, is the part that goes back to our farmers, our producers of crops, livestock. And of that $10 billion, ladies and gentlemen, of that $10 billion, it's the farm gate value, two-thirds two-thirds of that farm gate value is attributable to poultry and livestock. At a time when we transitioned from being the tobacco state uh, and, and being totally, almost totally reliant on tobacco, we transitioned into diversity in North Carolina. Uh, we got into the livestock business in a large way. We got into sweet potatoes. We got into fruits and vegetables. And now the, the grain crops are also very, very lucrative, and we still rank number one in tobacco uh, in the United States. So the, the message here is we have opportunities. Animal agriculture matters because it makes food affordable. One farmer, like I said earlier, feeds 155 people. 97% <clears throat> of U.S. Fam or farms today are family-owned. And that creates $2.4 billion in property taxes nationwide, $16 billion in income and sales taxes, and 2.5 million jobs. Farmers make great neighbors in many ways. We pay, or own, we pay rent or own our own land. So we have an investment in that land. Therefore, we're going to care for it to the very best of our ability. We, keep, um, we do no tilling. We practice the, the no erosion and other environmental friendly practices. Chemicals and fertilizers are very expensive. We're not going to spend that money if we don't have to. We also don't want to overapply and harm that land. We pay property taxes, but farmland uses very few proper tax dollars. You don't need police for farmland, fire for farmland. You don't need water and sewer for farmland. I've never met a farmer that wasn't rooted and firmly planted in their community. They don't travel. They don't move. They're, they're there. Their parents were there, they're there, and more than likely their children are going to be there. And you've already heard too that agriculture and agribusiness is responsible for one in five jobs in North Carolina. On our farm we employ 17 full-time people. Every day we pay their salaries and they don't get minimum wage. Most farm workers do not work for minimum wage anymore. Labor is one of the challenges that farmers face. Fewer and fewer people want to work on the farm. It pays pretty good, but it's a lot of hard work and the hours are not, are not very good. Fewer and fewer of our government officials have direct routes to the farm. More and more of them are very removed from agriculture. I've been to D.C. twice since April trying to talk to our senators and our congressmen about how important the farm bill is to us, which by the way is only 20% farm bill and 80% something else. But I've been up there twice to talk about that and the inheritance tax and how it would affect our farmers if it does not stay as it is or get um, actually lowered would be nice. While we must necessarily as managers focus on expenses and income, farmers never forget that our mission is to feed, clothe, and shelter all Americans and billions of other people around the world. Let me assure you that farmers want to do that in an environmentally safe way. We are the stewards of the land that we cultivate. There are several reasons for protecting and building our land, but one of the most important to us is to protect our factories. The old adage, take care of the land and the land will take care of you, has never been more true than it is today. With an ever-growing population and urban encroachment into our rural areas, we must be diligent in protecting our arable land for future production. Uh, as has been mentioned, livestock make up about two-thirds of our gross farm receipts of about $10 billion. So between 6 and $7 billion of that $10 billion are attributed directly to livestock and poultry. Now, when you go beyond just the direct effects, and this is where it really begins to impact areas like the Northeast here where you raise a lot of grain, is that animal agriculture supports a lot of uh, other industries in our state. If you look at how it supports large feed mills and poultry and uh, pork processing plants, you're talking about a tune of an investment of about $4.6 billion in those processing and feed mills that go to support 
and uh, go to uh, process that product from these uh, livestock and poultry farms. I'm happy to say, people, we've got to get involved. We must get involved if we're going to survive in the agriculture industry.